A while back, I talked about Apple's App Tracking Transparency Program, which is supposed to reduce tracking, at least from third-party companies within the Apple ecosystem, by requiring the developers of various apps to request permission from end users in order to track their activities, instead of just letting them all do it by default and having tracking being something that you're automatically opted into. Now, the impact of this has apparently been so profound. It's been impacting, for example, Facebook's bottom line so much that they've actually gone and bought ads on different platforms. They even went and took out a full page ad in the Wall Street Journal so that they can say, oh, Apple's decision is bad for small businesses and it goes against an open internet. Yeah, Facebook, you are totally a small business. I mean, how about that? You've got a trillion dollar social media company paying a billion dollar media company to complain about a trillion dollar tech company. It's almost as if a small group of people control big tech in the media and they use their influence to push their agenda by pitting the people that are too stupid to realize this against one another into various factions of controlled opposition. But we won't explore that rabbit hole any deeper for now because I'm pretty sure that it's illegal to do that on YouTube. YouTube. But the app tracking transparency, it has been fairly effective, at least for blocking third party tracking. Of course, Apple themselves are still going to track you. They're still going to use any data that they can collect on you since the illusion of privacy is much more profitable than providing actual privacy. And you know, you've got to give it to Apple. They are one of the most profitable and one of the most highly valued tech companies out there. They've really figured out a great way to brainwash people into thinking that their products are really providing them this excellent privacy. But you know, their walled garden isn't exactly ironclad. Okay, there are some holes in the armor here and different companies have still managed to find some ways around this app tracking transparency and just the reduced amount of tracking that's going on in general in the Apple ecosystem. Uh, for example, Facebook, can still track your activity within the apps that they've created. So if you're using WhatsApp, like the other 2 billion people out there, or you're using Instagram, there's not really a whole lot that Apple can do about that, right? If you send a message in WhatsApp, then I'm sure that the Zuck is still able to see what's going on there. I know, oh, they've got the end-to-end -end encryption, yeah. Sure they do. I mean, if you really honestly believe that Facebook or Meta or whatever they're deciding to call the company this week is using genuine end-to-end -end encryption and not spying on you within WhatsApp, then I, I don't know if you can be saved at this point. But you know, there's another way that you can track people on Apple's platforms. Recently, Verizon launched this program that they call Custom Experience in order to track their users. And we can take a look right here on their website what this is all about. So uh, what are Custom Experience and the Custom Experience Plus? Why should I participate? Your participation in our Custom Experience program helps us personalize our communications with you, give you more relevant product and service recommendations, and develop planned services and offers that are more appealing to you. So they make it sound like it's something that's just a benefit to you. But in reality, this is just collecting data in order to do targeted advertising, the same thing that literally every Every company is doing. I mean, seriously, targeted advertising must be one of the most profitable things that have been created in the past decade. Uh, and what information do you use for the customer custom experience programs? So it uses information about the websites that you visit and the apps on your mobile device to help them determine your interests, such as sports lover or outdoor enthusiasts. And they say that they use the first part of the web addresses uh, and they do not use any information past the first forward slash or question mark. So allegedly what's going on here is they're seeing the websites that you go to, but they're not necessarily seeing your search query. So for example, Verizon can see that I'm going to DuckDuckGo, but they can't see that I'm searching for the best prices on depleted uranium near me. There's also the Custom Experience Plus, which collects even more data on you, basically everything that the 
custom experience program collects, but in addition to that, device location information, information about your Verizon Fios services, and customer proprietary network information. And this includes things like the phone numbers that you are calling and the times of day that you receive those calls. And the spooky thing about this is that there isn't anything that Apple's app tracking transparency can do about it because Verizon owns the cell towers. So their ability to track people goes much deeper than an app or a setting in iOS. And this tracking is also present on Android phones, okay? Don't get it twisted and think that this is just me bashing Apple once again. But to be fair, the Android ecosystem is ultimately better when it comes to privacy, since the Apple ecosystem only gives you the illusions of privacy, okay? You've got the walled garden that Apple gives you, and there really isn't anything that you can do to change the configuration within it. Whereas in the Android ecosystem, your privacy is only limited by your ability to install and use custom ROMs. You can slap Graphene OS on a new Pixel phone, polish your tinfoil hat, so that it's nice and shiny and then go out and tackle the day. Now, the Verizon custom experience tracking is something that is enabled by default if you have a Verizon account, but luckily it is possible to disable it. You have to log in to your Verizon account, go to your privacy preferences, and then disable the custom experience and then that tracking should be disabled on all of your Verizon devices, or at least the ones that are connected to your specific account. So if you're using multiple accounts, then obviously you're going to have to sign into all of those and then disable it on all of them so that Verizon isn't tracking you. Now, while the corporate tracking here in America is becoming worse and worse by the day, over in Germany, things may soon become a bit more based, since the federal minister of justice, Marco Boschmann, wants to see the storage of telecommunications data without any reason come to an end. Now it's explained here in Tutanota's blog post, great email provider, by the way, uh, and I'll have a link to this blog post in the description of this video. Now, don't get too excited because there aren't any new laws written as far as I can tell actually enforcing this in Germany or the European Union. In fact, this blog post on Tutanota's site is basically about an interview that Boschman had with Waz or Waz, not, not exactly sure uh, how to pronounce this. Now, this is a German news outlet and I've gone ahead and translated it to English, uh, and so we have the relevant parts here that are talking about this data retention specifically. So, investigators are demanding more access to data, also to better track child pornography or human trafficking. Is data retention taboo for you? So this is uh, Boschman's response. I reject data retention without cause and would like to remove it from the law for good. It violates fundamental rights. If everyone has to reckon with the fact that a lot of their communication is saved for no reason, then nobody feels free anymore. Therefore, courts have repeatedly stopped the use of unrelated data retention. My suggestion is therefore louder. Telecommunications providers should have to quickly back up data on a specific occasion by order of a judge so that the police and public prosecutor can then evaluate it. In contrast to data retention in which the data of all citizens is saved, this should only be done for specific people on a case-by-case -case basis. This procedure should only be possible if serious criminal offenses are suspected. That would be in line with the rule of the law and would again give investigators an instrument for uncovering criminal offenses. That would be a gain for freedom and security at the same time. So yeah, I really hope that Germany is able to make it a crime to just retain data on people unnecessarily. It really sucks that the United States started this trend of just spying on all of its citizens and storing data about everything that they do online for years and years on end. 
This sounds like a big step in the right direction to ensuring people's privacy in a world that is becoming more and more riddled with spyware. Hopefully this becomes law before I go and visit Germany. But that's it for this video, guys. Like and comment to hack the algorithm, and have a great rest of your day.